One year ago, on April 29, 2023, I sold my iPhone XS and used the money I got from the sale to buy a Pixel 5 to run Graphene OS on. A couple of months later, I made a video on my initial impressions of Graphene OS after using it for a month. That video has become the most popular video on my YouTube channel by a long shot with it currently sitting at almost 350,000 views at the time of writing this script. And it's carried my channel from a modest 700 subscribers to over 3,000 subscribers at this point. With that said, I want to take a look back at the last year of living with Graphene OS. I've gone through many different configurations and launchers, and even changed phone providers, and yet I've still been using Graphene OS. What has changed in the last year with Graphene OS? So first, I just want to talk about what Graphene OS even is, if you don't know already. If you do know what Graphene OS is already, you can skip ahead to the next part using the timestamps. Basically, Graphene OS is a ROM or another OS made for the Google Pixel that enhances privacy and security. The best thing this ROM does is sandboxes Google Play services so that it is not able to have as much control over your phone as it's given in the stock OS. On normal Android phones, Play services is allowed control over a lot of permissions which allows Google to collect a lot of data about you. Graphene OS's advantages don't stop there, however. It also sports more robust multi-user switching, so you can make more profiles to separate different apps from different profiles. For example, if you wanted to set up your phone so that one profile only has free software from F-Droid, and another profile has non-free software that you need, then you can set it up like that with the multi-user function. Graphene OS also comes with some other hardening features that don't come with stock Android, such as the ability to set the phone to auto-reboot after a certain period of time. Now that you know what Graphene OS is, I'm also going to go into some improvements that have been made in the last year. The first thing I want to start with is Android Auto one of the biggest developments with Graphene OS in the last year. In my last video, I mentioned how Graphene OS was still missing a few features such as Google Pay and Android Auto. Unfortunately, Google Pay still doesn't work as of right now, and it likely won't ever work due to Google's reliance on safety net, which Graphene OS can't provide. However, Android Auto now works on Graphene OS. This is possible due to new technology that isolates apps being able to talk to each other on the back end which allowed Graphene OS to fully implement Android Auto. This app is downloadable from the Apps app, and when you download it, all you have to do is plug in a USB cable or pair your car by Bluetooth and Android Auto will load instantly. Some people might notice their apps that didn't come from the Play Store missing. However, this can easily be fixed by enabling developer options in Android Auto settings and allowing apps from outside sources. Currently, I don't have any real use for Android Auto as I drive a RAV4 from 2011 which obviously doesn't have Android Auto. However, it is still nice to have. There have been some other minor developments over the last year. For example, the Google Markup app was added to the apps in Graphene OS. This app allows you to edit screenshots right after you take them and mark them up. I was previously using the Simple Gallery app. However, this app could hitch up at times, so I'm glad that the developers decided to port this app from the stock Pixel OS. There are other functions that have also been decoupled from needing Play services. For example, it is now possible to use eSIMs without Play services installed, which is useful for people who set up eSIMs with one profile not having Play services installed. Graphene OS also supports the latest Pixel devices, including the Pixel Tablet and Pixel Fold, which I find pretty impressive considering the project is maintained by a small team of about 15 people. Now let's talk about some bugs I've experienced over the last year. I don't know if these bugs are specific to Graphene OS or if they're on the stock OS, but I'll still talk about them anyways. The biggest bug I have experienced so far is that the multitasking button will just randomly stop working out of nowhere. I'll put the clip up if I can get it, but basically I'll be using my phone as normal when it will suddenly stop opening the multitasker. This is really annoying because every time this happens, I need to enable gestures just to open the multitasker. I have no idea what causes this if it's a certain app or just something in the system that does this. Either way, I hope this gets fixed in an update. Battery life has also gotten worse, but I guess that's a given after a year of using this phone, and the phone still lasts me all day if I put it into power saver mode. Finally, this isn't a bug, but the stock camera doesn't have any way to record video in 60 frames per second from what I've seen. I've tried everything I could think of to enable video in 60 frames per second, but there's still no way to enable it. This really sucks because I wanted to drop the Pixel camera 
crap due to how slow it is. However, I can't because I still want to record video in 60 frames per second. But all of these are kind of minor nitpicks, except for the multitasking. And the truth is, while I have had a couple of issues, Graphene OS is still solid, even after a year I've been living with it. Some improvements Graphene OS could make is the ability to limit charging speed past 80% for extended battery life. This would probably take a lot of work to implement, but this could make the phone's battery last longer from not using as many charge cycles. Another improvement Graphene OS could use is scheduling updates so that the phone only updates when connected to Wi-Fi during the nighttime instead of updating randomly throughout the day like it currently does now. I checked the settings and I can't see any way to schedule updates, but maybe it's because the, my phone, the Pixel 5, is on legacy support, so it doesn't get the same features that newer phones do. That's it for my review of Graphene OS. Overall, I still recommend Graphene OS due to its hardening of security and its obvious privacy benefits. The developers put a lot of work into this ROM to make it as secure and private as possible, and it really shows in day-to-day -day use. If you guys didn't like this review, don't like and don't subscribe. See you all next time.